Dr. Rachel Knox and I am a cannabis specialist um, in the context of functional medicine and I also consider myself an endocannabinologist. So I study the, the endocannabinoid system um, and how we can apply cannabis and other botanicals as well as behaviors and mindfulness um, to the balancing of our endocannabinoid system. I uh, did my undergraduate studies at Duke University where I majored in African and African American studies and a minor in chemistry on my way to um, fulfilling my pre-medical requirements to go on to medical school and I eventually went to Tufts for medical school where I got my uh, MD and my MBA because both my parents told me that if I were going to do medicine I needed to do something different with it so I thought well getting an MBA and a dual degree, dual degree program excuse me, um, would you know, benefit me and maybe my purpose and someday I didn't know what that was going to be. Um, and from medical school I went on to residency in family medicine um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, where I well, studied family medicine, practiced family medicine, and also got to study and incorporate integrative medicine um, into the care that I gave my patients. So I was, I had the good fortune of going to a program that had that integrative component, which was probably the first seed that was planted in me um, to pursue natural medicine. I was introduced to this field by writing medical cannabis recommendations for patients, um, but patients came to me with questions. I was still their doctor, um, in a sense, and they had medical questions. So to answer those questions, I had to study cannabis, cannabis medicine, and this wonderful system inside of all of us called the endocannabinoid system, named after that plant. Um, and so, you know, the day in the life of Dr. Knox with our, my patients is um, discussing with them the ways they can use cannabis um, to, to heal. So a lot of patients tell me they have a difficult time talking to their doctors about cannabis. How do you even broach this subject? Um, with providers who really historically uh, have, have pushed cannabis you know, out of their practice. It's not their field of study. So what I tell um, those patients is to go to the doctor, talk about cannabis using non-pejorative terms. So let's try not to use the word marijuana. Let's say cannabis. Let's show our doctors that we respect and honor this medicine and tell your doctor why you use it, so how you use it, why you use it and how it benefits you. If that is reducing your pain, let them know. If you've been able to come off some medications, let them know that. Show them that it's made a measurable difference in your life. Diversity in cannabis is it's kind of a loaded subject. Um, the concern for most of us is that the war on drugs has disproportionately affected minority populations, um, whether that be through incarceration or, in the worst case scenario, um, unnecessary deaths. Um, there is tremendous concern that the people who are benefiting from legalization are of, uh, of the majority population, people with money, people who can really jump over those economic um, barriers into this industry that a lot of the minorities, especially minorities who have um, the additional um, the additional barrier of a history of incarceration, for example, who cannot get into the industry. So it's very important to all of us that we are represented and that there's time and energy and care put into um, bringing more minorities into the industry, whether that's uh, cultivation or a doctor like me entering the space. We want people who look like me um, to be more visible to consumers and really each other. I would say I am excited about um, where we are currently in this industry. It, it moves at a very quick pace. You know, some people say a year in the cannabis industry is seven um, because we're moving so quickly. And part of what excites me as a doctor is, um, well, getting more minds and hearts into uh, the cannabis medicine space because cannabis is medicine. And the more doctors um, that we have who start to study and truly believe in the healing potential of this plant, the more patients that we can impact. 
and um, you know, being a minority physician myself, I think it's 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 going to be even more exciting and incredible to bring in more uh, people again who look like me into this space because there's a lot of good that we can do for not only our minority populations um, as patients but everyone else. have the benefit of working with my family. Uh, my mom, dad, and sister are also physicians who are specializing in cannabis medicine. So when we talk about cannabis, there's, there's no shame there. Um, you know, there's no stigma. When we get out in, in front of other people, let's say at a garden party, for example, which actually happened a few weeks ago at my parents' house, um, well, we talk about cannabis because people ask us what we do, so it's hard to avoid. We're not going to lie. Um, but you know what? I, where I would have expected people to, um, you know, look at us a little, un, un, you know, uncertainly or have questions or or place a stigma on us, they don't. I think because we use our, our medical knowledge and our scientific knowledge in those conversations, people are really interested to know more. Um, and I think we're going to see more of that. People considering cannabis for themselves um, when we talk about cannabis in the context of health and healing, and especially when we have you know literature and scientific studies to back up what we're saying. My journey um, into alternative medicine, if you will, started in my third year of medical school. So back in my third year. I recognized immediately almost when I was exposed to the wards, um, so inpatient medicine, that something was wrong. Uh, most of the conditions we were treating were preventable in, in some form or fashion or even reversible. And I would ask my attending physicians, why aren't we talking to these people about nutrition and lifestyle? Um, and, and quite frankly, I was not happy with the answers I received. I got a lot of, we don't have time for that. I even got, oh, patients won't listen. Um, and besides, what we're doing is backed by evidence. Um, and again, that just wasn't good enough for me. For some reason, it didn't sit well with me. And from that point on, I decided that not only was I gonna do medicine different, you know, I, I got my MBA to be different and to make a difference in medicine, um, but I wanted to do something completely different. So right then and there, I knew that I would be um, using medicine um, to meet people where they're at in their lives. And I would learn nutrition. I would learn lifestyle by any means necessary. Um, I still had to go through residency. Um, and so I, I like to say I drank the Kool-Aid for a while for a bit just to make it through. And I am so grateful for what I did learn and what I was exposed to throughout residency. My, you know, my foundation of knowledge is broad um, with respect to conventional medicine. But I, I broke free out of residency and started teaching myself functional and natural medicine so that I could really make an impact in people's lives and helping them heal or prevent diseases altogether. So what I like to tell all aspiring doctors, whether they're pre-med, medical students or even residents is to know your why. Why do you want to be a doctor? What sort of impact do you want to make in patients' lives? Um, and, and for people who specifically want to use cannabis as medicine in their future practices, study. Study, study, study. The conventional system as it stands is not going to give you that education. Um, there are very few people um, relatively speaking, who know the science of cannabis. So read, study, talk to cannabis specialists like myself, um, and um, you know, close that network, um, and you will know how to apply the science of cannabis to um, your medical practice in the future. Just stick with it. We all had to do it. I had to do it. Um, which you know, I could have chose a naturopathy route. I didn't know that existed. Um, but if you're in the conventional system as we know it, just uh, grin and, and bear it. You will make it through. Just always know your why and apply that why every step of the way. You're going to learn, um, you know, the gold standard methods to care for our patients. But study behind the scenes, um, you know, build your knowledge base. You'll, you'll know how to use it.
I have all sorts of ideas on how to incorporate the study of the endocannabinoid system into the medical education. Once you study that ECS and you learn more about it, you understand that it impacts every physiologic system in our bodies. What I would love to see is for medical curriculum to be based on the endocannabinoid system. Thinking back to the way I was taught medicine in medical school, very systems-based, right? Um, and even the way medicine is practiced in subspecialties, we segment this thing called medicine. Um, when you and I have a body, and it's one whole body, all of our systems are interconnected. And what other system is more interconnected in our bodies other than the endocannabinoid system? So I truly believe that's the framework through which we should be learning every other subsystem in our body. A lot of people question um, how well cannabis has been studied. Um, most conventional medicine providers, politicians, lawmakers, um, you know, are, are, are bureaucrats, if you will, love to say there's just not enough evidence. Well, that's not true. There are over 20,000 clinical studies, research papers that have been written over the decades on cannabis that prove that it's efficacious um, and that it works. And I don't think we have one that really proves that it has any deleterious effects on our health, which is really fascinating. So when I'm asked whether I think that we have enough um, you know, research studies or if we need more, my response is, we have enough to validate the use of cannabis in medicine, but we could always use more. Here in the United States, we have not had the true benefit of performing you know, the gold standard, placebo-controlled, double-blinded, um, randomized controlled trials that direct our conventional medical care. Um, and the reason that is is because cannabis remains a Schedule One drug and, and it's just a very rigorous and difficult process to get approval for such studies in this country. Um, so number one, we're going to have to reschedule or deschedule cannabis um, to do the type of studies in this country that we want to do to make um, you know, some of the claims. I mean, we know cannabis works well in epilepsy and anxiety and in pain. Well, why? Well, we do have studies that suggest the answers to those questions, um, but, but we could do better. We could get more. And I would love to see more, um, you know, local clinical observational studies. I think that doctors could perform those sorts of studies. Um, universities could perform those sorts of studies. Um, and then for the, the few of us who are fortunate enough to get the grants and the approvals to use cannabis and, and run these gold standard studies, we should, absolutely. The more evidence we have, the better and the more comfortable both doctors and patients are gonna be in using cannabis as medicine. In medicine, we have a plethora of databases where we all gather our, our, our information. There are tons, like I mentioned, 20,000 plus um, you know, research studies and articles on cannabis, go to PubMed, go to Medline. Um, all these sources are, are credible and have access to all of these studies. So med students, uh, you know, residents, attending physicians, um, politicians, lawmakers, the lay public, you can all go online and search these databases for their free content. So it's always very difficult for me to pick one medical problem that's close to my heart because the issue that I have with conventional medicine is the fact that it it's really is a sick care system or a chronic care system um, of diseases that are reversible um, and preventable. And most of those diseases are our metabolic diseases, you know, um, heart disease, cancers, diabetes. Um, so our, our those are our leading causes of death in this country. It goes heart disease, um, cancer, um, stroke, and then diabetes is up there too, I think top five. And those things are preventable. And so I get most passionate about those particular diseases. I work really hard with my patients to reverse those um, or to prevent them altogether. And I, I know how 
based on the clinical studies to date, how impactful cannabis can be in ischemic diseases. So that would be heart attack or stroke, or in uh, metabolic diseases such as diabetes, um, of which the consequences are very sinister and deadly. Um, so if I had to claim anything I'm most passionate about, it would truly be our, our most deadly yet irreversible irre diseases. Um, but I really believe my, my business background has given me a third lens um, into the conventional medical space. Um, I was able to see a lot that was wrong with the way we were running medicine. And I believe with, with that perspective, what I will be able to apply to cannabis medicine is really invaluable. So my family and I are building our own clinical practice um, focusing on endocannabinoid health. Um, and we're using a lot of what um, we understood to be wrong or prohibitive in the conventional space um, to create a type of medicine and program that is really going to work with patients um, in leading them into health. Um, with cannabis as one of the tools that we use to get them there. I'm the co-founder of the Canna MDs, which is a physician group made up currently of my family, so my mother, father, and sister, with a focus on um, functional medicine, but with a specialization in the endocannabinoid system and using cannabis as one of our tools to help people reverse their disease or prevent disease to regain, reclaim their health. Um, so we're based in Portland, Oregon, and um, we see patients um, with all kinds of ailments, multiple sclerosis, asthma, epilepsy, and cancer, just to name a few. Um, we do consultative work and we also work with local um, companies who do medical recommendations so that we can serve our population at large. And I also am the medical chair of the Minority uh, Cannabis Business Association. So I have a medical committee that I'm building currently um, to fulfill our, our third, um, what is it called? Our third tenant, <laughs> our third tenant, which is patient advocacy. And we really want to get out and get people exposed to medical cannabis. We want to write recommendations for people in states where medical cannabis is legal. We want to help bridge um, the gap between cannabis and affordability for a lot of these communities because we know that cannabis is invaluable to treating a lot of the chronic diseases these communities uh, suffer from. Oregon, we have a medical marijuana program. Um, the medical program has been in effect since 1998. So medical legalization took place uh, over, over 10 years ago. So we have a really robust program here. And within the last few years, recreational use, adult use became legal as well. So we are a completely legal state here in Oregon. There is an increasing need for um, medical consultation in this space. While cannabis has been legal for medicinal, medicinal purposes in Oregon and um, just recently became legal for adult use, people have questions now. You know, everybody was like, hooray, it's legal, now we can use cannabis. And people are just using whatever they can get their hands on without knowing what they're taking, how it's working. Um, and so intentional application of cannabis is becoming more important because patients are realizing why they they feel great on a certain strain, they don't really know how, but now they've been diagnosed with you know, X condition. How can cannabis be used to treat that specific condition? And again, we have tons of research and, and evidence that can help doctors like myself um, guide their use of that cannabis. So I know there's a growing need and there's only four of us in my physician group. And so what keeps me up at night, it keeps me anxious is is really how quickly we're gonna be able to get you know, our information, our content, our services out to the masses. Um, because I know that uh, there are far many more patients than we could even handle. So getting more nurses, uh, more doctors, more Chinese medicine um, doctors, acupuncturists, chiropractors into the space um, to share this space with us um, 
is exciting but also makes me a little anxious because I, the need is here now um, and we really want to be scalable so that we can um, be of service to the community at large. I totally enjoy what I do, are you kidding? It's, it's just exciting to be part of something young and new. Um, I've I've always known, just I felt you know, deep within me that I, I was going to be a part of something special and not for my benefit, I knew that. Um, and you know, throughout medical school and residency, the little voice inside my head that was making me question the conventional system, I truly think was you know, subtly directing me into cannabis. I didn't know that. And I always tell people I think cannabis found me. And, and I think that's why I'm having so much fun and I'm so excited about it because it landed on me. Um, this brand new industry, and we, I mean, we're really pioneering in this space. Who wouldn't be excited about being a pioneer in a new industry? Um, so, you know, anything that that I can use to help restore health in my life, my family's life, and the people around me, my patients, the community, energizes me. It really excites me. And cannabis has the potential to be, well, it already is ground, groundbreaking, but it really has the potential to bring natural medicine back into the forefront of how we practice medicine. And to me, that's really exciting. He passes it to me and the smoke makes the room feel like a dream. I struggle with anxiety. I don't know where it came from or when it first presented itself to me. It's not always there or even mostly there, but when it is, I feel paralyzed. For me, it's a fear of being seen. Too seen to leave the house. Then I feel depressed because I didn't leave the house. I inhale and I wait, then I feel it. The clarity can hurt like looking through a river that is piercingly clear. The surface looks like glass, and the rocks are so cold below it's almost heartbreaking. I imagine that this feeling I get from smoking is like that. It's almost beautiful, because I suddenly validate all of the fears. Fear of living for nothing, having no purpose, and emotions, unhappiness, anger, guilt, that I have been avoiding for too long, and it's terrifying and gratifying all at once. I try to tell him, but he thinks I'm just being paranoid. It sounds like I am self-loathing, and I can't convince him that I'm not. I smoke and feel more powerful and controlled than I ever have. Like I have been living this life under a dark cloud, and all of a sudden it clears. So, so clear, and I can see a streak of sunlight that will be my path to happiness. But this is not where my story ends. I don't always experience the effects of marijuana the same way. I feel the harsh stares of strangers like needles down my spine. I feel vulnerable, exposed, unliked. I can rationalize my anxiety, but that doesn't make it go away. All I can do is wait. For people like me who struggle with anxiety or any mental affliction, cannabis could offer a solution to the crippling effects our minds have on our spirits. My hope for the future of the industry is that regulation and standardization will allow buyers to make informed purchases. Until I can be more confident in what I am smoking, I will turn down any joint that's passed to me, but not every time. Occasionally I'll try again, and I'll inhale and wait. My heart thump, not from being nervous sometimes I'm thinking God made me special here on purpose So all the while till I'm gone Make my words important so If I slip away, if I die Solo te quieren poder 
Chicago, Cleveland, Washington. Keep on the street. Only strong then the same face. Let's go. United. 